Welcome to the Backwoods Gourmet. Today we're going to cook a Cornish hen in the Dutch oven, so y'all stay tuned. So today what we're going to make is a Cornish hen and we're going to do it in the Dutch oven. We'll show you what you need. Alright, so we're going to do it in the number 10 Lodge Dutch Oven, one of my favorites. Alright, this is uh, going to be a perfect size for doing this little guy right here. And here he is. He's uh, straight up out of the package. We uh, rinsed him off real good, cleaned out the insides, patted him dry. So what we're going to do is we're going to stuff him. So what you're going to need for the stuffing, some breadcrumbs. We just made these fresh out of some sourdough bread. They're going to be yummy. We got onions, we got celery, we got some chopped cilantro, we got some mushrooms, some green bell pepper, some pepper, some salt, some Everglades seasoning, and some olive oil, and a large uh, mixing bowl. So first thing we're going to do is get the charcoal ready for the Dutch oven. So we've got our, uh, our uh, plate prototype, prototype that we're working on uh, on top of our Weber kettle. We're just going to get our coals out there, make sure those are all lit. We're going to kind of push those to the side and we'll get our Dutch oven and we're going to get it preheating. Important. We want to cook this uh, little hen at uh, 350, 375. So we're going to take the number of our Dutch oven, which is in this case a number 10, deduct three, in the, three from the bottom. Okay, so that's going to give us seven coals on the bottom. I'm actually going to scoot this over because I have a, a few holes drilled in this uh, prototype plate here to help uh, with uh, hotter dishes. There we go, we got seven on the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just get the Dutch oven up on there and let it start heating up the bottom portion. And while it's doing that, we'll put a little oil in it. Okay, so this stuffing's pretty simple uh, and it's gonna help lend some moisture to our dish. I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna do all this amount. We may not use it all because it's a very small bird, but whatever we don't use, we'll just saute off on the side. Uh, cilantro, celery, onions, mushrooms. And I've cut these all pretty fairly uh, good size. Uh, bell pepper and a good sprinkle of breadcrumbs just to help. Not a whole lot. We don't want this to be all bread. I'm just going to toss that together. All right. And we're going to come in with a, a good fair pinch of salt and then pepper. All right. There's the pepper. And, you know, we generally do the salt, try to control it. I put it in my hand. Maybe a teaspoon of salt. Or maybe not even quite that much. Depends on your tolerance. Alright, we got a little olive oil that's going to go in. Next thing, some melted butter. So we'll go get that. Okay, a little melted butter over top. And we're just going to toss that real good with a spoon. And make sure everything gets a nice coating of butter and olive oil. We're not looking for a real, you know, bready stuffing because the juices from that bird are going to cook out into this and it'll be just fine. So just toss that together and it's ready. Yummy. Okay, so now we're just going to stuff the chicken. And it doesn't really matter how you accomplish this uh, particular process. Just going to take a tablespoon and we'll tablespoon it in there. This is going to give the bird uh, a lot of moisture from those veggies, but we really want to pack them too. It's also going to give them a lot of uh, structure. So sometimes the uh, good old finger method works the best, especially for the packing part. And this is not a real wet stuffing, so you know, not going to make too much of a mess. You just want to pack that cavity really full. And I really slid this out of view for you guys, but we just packed it all, 
tight. Don't worry about it if you got some stuffing left over. We'll saute that off. And it'll be uh, awesome. Alright. So, he's all nice and stuffed there now. And then we'll show you how to truss it without any strings. That's magic. Alright, so to truss a chicken without any strings, first thing we're going to do is go back here on this uh, little flabby bit. He's got back here by his tail end. And we're going to go about uh, three quarters inches in from the skin. We're going to take a sharp knife and we're going to puncture the skin and make about a three quarter of an inch long incision. Okay? I'm going to grab his leg from this side. Well, I got my finger through the hole. See here? My finger's through the hole. So I'm going to grab his leg from this side and pop it through the hole on the flabby bit from the other side. Okay? Then I'm going to grab the one from this side. Do the same thing. And we'll grab this leg, we'll bring it around underneath. Kind of lost my hole there for a second, which happens sometimes. Patient with it. And we'll take that knuckle, the end of the leg, and pop it right through there. Now his own skin is holding, oop, popped out, and that happens sometimes too. Okay, so now his own skin is holding his legs together. No need for any strings or knots or any of that other mess. So now we got the wings. I'll readjust it and I'll show you how to do the wings. So the next thing we're going to do is wings. And what we're going to do is use his own skin to hold these wing tips in. Fold them around up under the bottom. They're just going to burn on the bottom of a Dutch oven. But they got a lot of fat and they really lend a lot of uh, flavor to the breast meat. So what we're going to do is make a small incision right up underneath this right in his armpit. And we're going to turn that wing tip around. We're going to pull the skin out. I'm going to shove his wing tip right under the skin beside his breast. You can see it bulging up inside the inside the breast there. So we'll do the same thing on the other side and be ready to season. So now that we got him stuffed, trussed up in uh, backwards gourmet style, we're going to just drizzle him with some olive oil and wipe that all over his skin. Really the best way to do this with your hands. We'll roll him over, make sure we get some on his back, everywhere on the bird. That's going to help crisp up, crisp up the skin and also help our seasoning stick. So all right, let me wash my hands and then we'll get seasoned. Okay, today I'm going to use uh, Everglades seasoning. Use your favorite, but I'm just going to give him a. Hopefully, we get this to come out the right direction here. Use Everglades, and we're just going to give him a good sprinkle all over his skin side. Try to get him on all sides. If you have a favorite seasoning you like the best, use that. on the top so that's going to be his home for about the next uh, we'll check him in about 40 minutes so we'll set a timer you know this is a really easy dish to do when you're uh, you know you're outdoors or you're camping um, or just picnicking for that matter you could prep that bird uh, the night before get him stuffed throw him in a gallon ziploc bag put him on some ice bring him out put him in a dutch oven and while everybody else is eating 
burnt ass hamburgers and hot dogs and chips out in the campground, you'll be eating baked Cornish hen. Wow. It's been about uh, one hour. And this is what our uh, little little guy looks like. It's like his tender skin kind of broke his legs loose back here. Pretty tender. So we're gonna go ahead and take him out and we're gonna make a gravy with the drippings right in the Dutch oven. Okay, we just cooked our coals, or shook our coals off the lid. And we put them back over here. And I'm just gonna put that pot right on top of what's, what we got left and step back up to the simmer, if possible. If not, we might have to add some. Okay, so we just, uh, in our Dutch oven, we just put a tablespoon of water and a tablespoon of cornstarch. Get over those uh, remaining coals. I'm just gonna stir that gently. That's going to make a nice gravy from the juices of our chicken. Alright, just a couple minutes and that'll be ready to go. Okay, here we go, time for the plate. So we're going to bring our Cornish hen right over here on the, the platter. And we're just going to kind of quarter them. Uh, very, very fall off the bone tender. I'm gonna go ahead. We're gonna going do this dish up uh, family style so that everybody can kind of you know take what they want. We'll go ahead and we'll take the wings, kind of cut them up into pieces. Oh, it's just super, super tender. Right. Get our wings off there. We're gonna go ahead and just kind of split it right down the middle, right through the backbone. Then we're going to put one side with the stuffing up, and then pieces. Alright, we'll go ahead and put the stuffing side up right there, so that people can get in there and get a little scoop of that. There's some more of that stuffing. Mm, that is going to be awesome. Now with that on the plate, we have our gravy from our Dutch oven we just made there. I'm going to go ahead and take that out. Gonna drizzle that all over the plate. You could serve this on the side also, but I think it's gonna be better, you know, when people just reach in there, get a nice uh, big piece of chicken with the gravy on it. Final garnish. For me, all this needs is a little chopped cilantro or parsley right over the top. And there you go. Dutch oven baked Cornish hen. It's gonna be awesome. Now, I know you can't trust when the chefs taste their own food, but we'll give it a shot because some of you have asked for it. gravy really makes the dish so don't forget to do the gravy Watching it back was gourmet. If you like what we're doing, hit the subscribe button right here. Hey, if you want to see our last video, check it out right up there. And for a whole playlist of cast iron and Dutch oven cooking, see it right up here. We'll see you next time.